Hi students, hello, how are you? Okay, this is a continuation of chapter 4, physics form 4, chapter heat. In today's lesson, we will look at specific latent heat. We'll start with latent heat. Okay, we'll start with the specific latent heat and latent heat. Latent heat refers to the amount of heat energy needed by any substances, any objects when there's a change in the state of matter. So when an object goes through changes in the state of matter, these sub objects will absorb heat energy or release heat energy. The quantity of heat energy needed as the object goes through a changes in the state of matter, it's called latent heat. So there are actually three types of latent heat, the latent heat of fusion, the latent heat of vaporization and the latent heat of sublimation. But we will concentrate the latent heat of fusion, if you look at the notes here, the slides here, the latent, of, the latent heat of fusion is the amount of heat energy needed when there is a change from solid to liquid or back from liquid to solid and the amount of latent heat of vaporization is the amount of heat energy needed when the state of matter changes from liquid to gas or vapor or back from vapor gas to liquid. The latent heat of sublimation we will not look we will not go through in our subtopic. Okay, when we describe specific latent heat of fusion. Earlier I said latent heat is the amount of heat energy needed when the substances goes through changes in the state of matter. Yes, true. The specific latent heat of fusion is the amount of heat energy needed by every 1 kg mass of a substance. So when we use the word specific, we have to include the mass. So specific latent heat of fusion is the amount of heat energy needed by every 1 kg mass of a substance to change the state of matter from solid to liquid. You have to understand students, the specific latent heat of fusion is 336,000 336, joules per kg. And this amount is equal, is equal when 1 kg mass of solid changes from solid to liquid or when 1 kg mass of liquid changes from liquid to solid. So what happens when you have 1 kg of ice as the ice melt to become water liquid. The 1 kg mass of the ice requires 336,000 of heat energy to melt. The same thing when you have 1 kg liquid water, 336,000 joules of heat energy must be released to change it back to ice. So specific latent heat of fusion is the amount of heat energy needed by 1 kg mass of a substance to change the state of matter from solid to liquid while the temperature remain constant while the temperature remain constant okay you can see the formula the formula is q equals to ml q refers to the mass of the sorry q refers to the quantity of heat energy needed m is the mass of the object and l is the value of specific latent heat of fusion which i said earlier 336000 per joule per kg uh, sorry 336000 joules per kg if you see here, what is the amount of heat energy needed, all right, which is Q and the specific latent heat of fusion refers to, if you see the diagram, when 1 kg mass, when 1 kg mass of a solid changes to 1 kg mass of a liquid. So the energy required by 1 kg mass of that ice is 336,000 joules. So it will be given, that values will be given in your questions. So specific latent heat of fusion is the amount of heat energy involved in joules, all right, when objects are changing state of matter from solid to liquid. 
Alright, so specific latent heat of fusion is the amount of heat energy needed by 1 kg mass of a substance to change the state of matter from solid to liquid while temperature remain constant. Okay, as I said earlier, the specific latent heat of fusion is for the changes from solid to liquid or from liquid to solid. So the state of matter is solid liquid or liquid solid. So we also can explain that specific latent heat of fusion is the amount of heat energy needed by 1 kg mass of a substance to change the state of matter from liquid to solid while temperature remain constant. The formula remain the same if you see this slide. Okay, next. We also need to understand how to determine the specific latent heat of fusion of ice. Alright, we will go in detail about this experiment in the next video. Okay, students, it's in your textbook, you can refer to. You also need to know how to determine the specific latent heat of vaporization of water. As I said earlier, we'll go through the method to determine in the next videos. Okay, what is specific latent heat of vaporization? So, we have two specific latent heat of fusion changes from state of matter of solid to liquid or liquid to solid then specific latent heat of vaporization is the changes in the state of matter from liquid to gas or gas to liquid so if you're going to write the definition it's very easy you just tell oh specific latent heat of vaporization is the amount of heat energy needed by one kg mass of a substance is the amount of heat energy needed by one kg mass of a substance to change the state of matter from liquid to gas while the temperature remain constant. While the temperature remain constant, the formula is the same. Q equals to ML. Q is the quantity of heat energy. M is the mass of the substance that going through the changes. And L is the value of specific latent heat of vaporization. The value of specific latent heat of vaporization, it's a bit bigger than the value of specific latent heat of fusion. Specific latent heat of vaporization is 2.26 million joules for every kg. A bit bigger glass, our students. Next. So if you see the diagram, you should know latent heat of vaporization is the energy needed by 1 kg liquid water 1 kg liquid water to change the state of matter to gas this is the specific latent heat of vaporization okay next students as i said earlier again if specific latent heat of vaporization the value is 2.26 million joules per kg that's the amount of energy needed for every 1 kg of liquid water to boil completely to turn to state of matter of gas or, or when we have 1 kg mass of vapor gas or steam that goes through condensation to change back to the state of liquid. So the amount of energy involved is equal in both, all right, from the liquid to gas or from gas to liquid. The amount of energy is equal. Next, if you see here, the things that we need to understand, as ice melt to become water, the heat energy is absorbed. We call this latent heat of fusion. As the water boils or vaporizes to turn to steam, the heat energy is absorbed. We call this latent heat of vaporization. And when the steam or gas or vapor changes back to liquid form we call this still latent heat of vaporization so gas to liquid and finally when the liquid freezes freeze to form ice or solid it's latent heat of fusion so summarize easily heat energy is absorbed as the substance changing from solid to liquid and liquid to gas heat energy is released when the substance changes from gas to liquid and liquid to solid. And another thing you need to understand here from the diagram clearly is that 
latent heat of fusion latent heat of fusion is for the state of matter changes from solid to liquid and back liquid to solid and the latent heat of vaporization if you look at it here is the heat and heat heat energy involved when the substance changes from liquid to gas and gas to liquid again okay we will continue with the graph if you see this is the heating curve the heating curve graph things that we have to remember a commonly asked question in SPM as the temperature increases from A to B we should know particles absorb the heat energy state of matter remain constant average kinetic energy of particles are increasing same goes from C to D and E to F so in the state of solid in the state of liquid and in the state of gas as the temperature increases average kinetic energy of particles increases but the state of matter remain constant so if you look at a graph of heating curve when the temperature increases state of matter remain constant why temperature increases because the particles absorb the heat energy and the average kinetic energy of the particles are increasing when we look at stage bc and de bc is the melting point de is the boiling point during the melting point heat energy is still absorbed by the particles the particles are continuously absorbing the heat energy but what happened here is that the heat energy absorbed is used to overcome the forces of attraction between the particles same goes true during the boiling point of de so bc and de temperature remain constant because state of matter is changing is changing students and what are the latent heat involved as ice melt they absorb the heat energy from the surrounding as water boil they absorb the heat energy from the surrounding I repeat again as ice melt they absorb the heat energy from the surrounding as water boil they absorb the heat energy from the surrounding and if you look at it here when the water vapor condenses they releases the heat energy to the surrounding so you have to know these stages all right so latent heat of fusion involved when ice is melting latent heat of vaporization involved when water is boiling and, wa and water condenses when water condenses or vapor condenses again latent heat of vaporization involved here okay class okay students the last thing we have to know today is that evaporation evaporation occur at any temperature evaporation is a basic process where the liquid changes to gases it does not need a direct amount of heat like boiling you have to heat it up but vaporization can just occur like that okay we look at it here students when vaporization occur evaporation will actually cool down a surface why does this thing happen okay you see the surface of liquid when you have a liquid on the surface i, I would like to use sweating if you sweat the water particles on the surface which is exposed to the air will actually experience a great collision with the air particles and if the speed of air particle is faster like a fast movement of a wind the particles on the surface will absorb the heat energy and their average kinetic energy increases they break off they are able to overcome the forces of attraction between water molecules and they change their state from liquid to gas evaporation takes place these water particles on the surface as they absorb the heat energy from the collision with the air particles they also will absorb the heat energy from the water particles at the lower layer at the lower layer the particles on the surface will absorb the heat energy from the lower layer and they gain the energy so what happened to the particles of water or liquid which are in contact with the skin surface they are absorbing the heat energy from the skin surface 
as the skin is losing the heat energy to this layer of water particles we will feel cold so evaporation causes cooling if you see here class students surface molecules absorb the heat increase their average kinetic energy and they overcome their forces of attraction water to water molecule and they change they evaporate they vaporize they change to gas they enter the air but during this process kinetic energy of the remaining molecules on the surface of the skin will lose energy and they started to absorb the heat energy from the skin and the skin is losing energy to the water molecules which is in contact with the surface of the skin so the skin will lose heat energy and we feel cold so simple when you take your bath as you come out and if the fan is on you started to feel cold this is a simple reason because every process of liquid goes through evaporation they are absorbing heat to the surface in contact so the surface in contact for example the skin will become cold right and the last thing we need to know is the application of specific latent heat in our daily life okay the refrigerator okay i will go through the refrigerator with the experiments in the next video students thank you very much and have a great day take care students bye